First, we have the current state of the environment. This is the state of the world that the AI system currently exists within. Next, we sense the world using a series of sensors. Sensors convert the state of the world into digital data. The data can be audio, images, and video, just like we've previously seen, or it can be data from other types of sensors like velocity, radar, GPS, and more. Then, we apply perceptual machine learning models to the sensor data. These models, like we've already seen, convert the sensor data into features. Features are abstract representations of the physical world. We merge sensor data together in a process called sensor fusion, and we represent these various features in what we call feature space. Think of it like the system's mental model of the state of the world. Next, we use a planning engine to develop a plan of action. This planning engine is often a combination of explicit programming and a type of machine learning called reinforcement learning. With reinforcement learning, we provide reward signals for actions that lead the cyber-physical system closer to its goal. We also provide punishment signals, that is, negative rewards, for actions that lead it further away from its goal. Using rewards and punishments for behavioral reinforcement over time, the system learns how to choose actions that maximize the likelihood of achieving its goal. Actions represent everything the system can possibly do. For example, accelerate, brake, turn left, or turn right. The chosen action is the one that maximizes the expected likelihood of achieving the system's goal subject to a set of constraints. Finally, the chosen action is fed to actuators. Actuators include motors and other types of outputs that can physically affect the state of the world. The actuators physically act upon the world with the appropriately chosen action. However, the changed state of the world also now becomes input for the next iteration of our function. So we have to repeat this loop several times a second, choosing new actions for each iteration. This feedback loop makes things much more complicated than our simple input-to-output mappings we saw earlier. To learn more, please click the link in the description. For more content like this, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe.